Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Photography Chat with Merlin, Season 2, Episode 26 with Allie Bartlett. Um, let's get Allie in the chat here and then we can get going. Um, hope everyone has been doing well this week, staying out of trouble and staying cool if you're anywhere where there's been uh, the, the heat dome. Um, it's been kind of a wild time. So let's... Uh, Let's get Allie in here. Thanks for joining in. Hey, Pitcher Man Bob, how are you doing? What's up, Dylan? Also, uh, for those of you that uh, may not know yet or are interested to check it out, uh, we still have a fundraiser going with Fear and Loathing 35mm Northern Film Collective uh, where we've got three uh, photos that uh, Dylan has donated um, to uh, help raise funds for the uh, the Kamloops Indian Band and uh, the discovery at the um, the residential school out there. So if you want to check that out, you can go to the Northern Film Collective uh, page or you can uh, go to northernfilmcollective.ca forward slash cam loops. And here. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm not too bad. I like the, the view of the filing cabinets there. Uh, yeah, I am at work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope yeah. uh, you, we won't get you in trouble at work there. Oh no, they just left and I definitely mentioned that I was going to be doing this. So. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think we'll probably end up watching it in the office tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, uh, this would probably be a great opportunity to uh, introduce yourself and let people know what, uh, <laughs> what the filing channels are all about and stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm Allie Bartlett. I'm from Nova Scotia. I currently work uh, as a curatorial assistant. And so the files behind me are uh, some of our archives. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff to sort in back here. So, so yeah, just thought I'd sit over here and give you guys a better view of the office than uh, some of the clutter we have going on. <laughs> That's fair. What kind of stuff are you curating right now? Uh, so it's mostly some heritage works. And so, yeah, the we don't have any like upcoming exhibitions per se just because we are just yeah. opening up again uh so i'm helping with that and just getting things underway yeah but we do have a large photography collection so Ooh. yeah that's kind of where i think some of my stuff comes into play and you know i have a history in art handling so that helps out. yeah <laughs> yeah nice how's your week been going pretty good i mean I, this is like my Monday, so it's yeah, it works out for me. I just had three days off. Yeah. That's a bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, how have you been? Not bad. I'm glad that the heat wave piped down over here. It was a little crazy in Vancouver, especially because people are just not geared for that kind of heat here. Yeah, I mean, very lucky on the Sunshine Coast um, to be right near the water, so you know, I can go for a swim anytime, really, but it's yeah, really hot. Yeah, we just, we just don't have AC. Of, well, yeah, no one really has AC out here. Like, yeah. that was something I was used to out in Toronto, because you, you kind of need it with... Yeah, I feel like there's not that many places in Canada that actually have it, but I don't know. Maybe I'm biased just being from the coast, and then also being from the East Coast. It's just, you don't have AC. That's fair. Yeah, I, I guess I've lived in like two of the few places in Canada where you need AC because I, yeah. I used to live in Kamloops, which you absolutely need it there. Yeah. Um, and then Toronto, where it definitely helps with the heat <laughs> humidity. Um, yeah, I can only imagine. I remember when I moved from Nova Scotia to Boston, I didn't think I would need AC. And then, yeah, I think with within a very short amount of time, I spent like one miserable night and I was like, that's it. And then I got <laughs> off of like craigslist really cheap <laughs> yeah. yeah especially like boston would have a very similar climate to toronto and... yeah it's just it didn't seem that far away from nova scotia so i really didn't think it would be that much warmer uh you know and in the states 
I think relatively it's like northern so yeah you know, they always talk about how cold it is there I really wasn't prepared <laughs> but it isn't really that northern when you look at how it sort of dips yeah I was misled <laughs> yeah I should have looked a bit closer at the map. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Well, like a, a friend of mine was just saying that like a, a pal of hers from where she grew up in Alberta is uh, planning a trip through the Rockies and stuff. And she was like, oh, I'll totally come like visit you in Vancouver when, <laughs> when you come through. And her boyfriend was like, let's look at a map. <laughs> yeah. Just Google Maps how far away that is like as a drive. Yeah. yeah. But it's funny too, like I've I've had some American friends when I lived in Vancouver, they were like, Oh hey, I'm gonna be in Toronto, you wanna meet up for lunch? And it's like I I would love to meet you for lunch, yeah. but that's not really feasible. Like, you know Yeah, it's, it's like meeting somebody in Chicago if you're from LA, you know, it's just <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I like Chicago a lot. You know, uh, if my pockets were really deep and I really liked you, then maybe, but... That's know. fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. um, have you been working on any photography projects lately, or...? I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to set up a dark room in my place. Um, just really streamlining it, but, you know, I just haven't really gotten around to it yet. I got that enlarger, so nice. we have the same one now, but, yeah, I haven't quite... Uh, gone around to testing it just because like my studio is like the sunniest room in the house oh no uh and it's carpeted so I want to do the chemistry in the bathroom and just transport stuff kind of through like a blackout bag so I'll, there's some problems to work out there and I don't know I recently started here so we'll see maybe I could get one going here instead because I recently well, yeah, found two enlargers maybe. in the collection so yeah, maybe they've got a space. You could just be like, hey, could I... Work? Yeah, I mean, the one of the bath... Like, there's definitely some pieces in here that are totally dark. And I did find two enlargers, so we'll see. They actually didn't know what they were, so that was cool. Maybe but... you could start a camera club, which could, like, bring extra revenue in. We'll see. That could be cool. We do have an exhibit on right now about, uh, um, like, one of the first photographers of the area so we have like her collection and then we have some of like her cameras on display right now That'd so be cool. I just yeah I have to see how much interest there is since like the population here is maybe not substantial enough um but it could be like a like an interesting or workshop later on when we are able to have more visitors but that's fair uh, we're doing like if, if Ali's work. boss is listening right now earmuffs so, oh, he doesn't don't... have a cell phone. He will not hear this till tomorrow. <laughs> well, I just say, like, for tomorrow, when he listens to it, it's like, you can be like, oh, yeah, there's tons of interest. The interest is mostly you, though. That's where the tons Yeah, of it's like, I'm keen on it. Um, <laughs> I might know, like, one or two other people, uh, but, you know, we'll That's see. all you need. It's a start. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, that will be part of the job, too, is, like, doing some of the workshop uh, coordination, at least, so. We'll see if anybody wants to do it. <laughs> me, me, Samuels asked, where is here, Allie? Oh, so I live on the Sunshine Coast, and I'm working at a museum in Gibsons right now. Okay. Uh, I've never actually been out there. Yeah, it's not bad. I like it. You know, mountains, ocean, what's not to love? I do. I miss the mountains a lot. Like, that's one yeah. of the things that I'm, I'm very glad to see again after uh, moving back out here. Yeah, I think... Toronto versus Vancouver that's the big perk is the mountains right it is it's weird though so it's like I never thought I would really miss Toronto a lot but like I, I really miss Toronto a lot <laughs> so. yeah it's tough it's tough moving during the pandemic right it is um like had the pandemic never happened I would have stayed in Toronto um but I mean, let's not get into those what ifs, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is what we're in right now. This is this is the reality of the world. Yeah. Um, but we did get to have an interesting experience. Um, so my friend Kat and I went to go to Mystery Lake in Mount Seymour, but the like the trail to it was completely still snowed in, which was kind of wild to see when it was like super hot out. There's like huge mounds of snow still. 
And it was a weird experience standing barefoot in snow in like 30 degree weather. <laughs> yeah, it's almost, you know, it's like when you see the people skiing in Whistler with like bikinis and bathing suits on, right? You're just yeah. like, it looks freezing, but it's actually totally normal. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was kind of cool. It was a terrible day to choose to do a hike. Like, you know, you shouldn't go hiking when it's that hot out. But Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, definitely during the heat wave here, I was, I didn't even want to go to the beach at some points. I definitely did, but it was just one of those things that, like, you go in the water, and by the time you get to the hot dog cart, you totally dried off, and you're just as hot as when you started. So, yeah. Hot dog carts. I miss those things. Yeah, they, we have one by one of the beaches here, so it's, I stopped by there. I'll give a little shout out to Davis Bay there. <laughs> there was a really dope hot dog cart in Toronto off of Ossington called Kung Fu Dog. It was <laughs> like a tiny little shipping container kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and he made the best um, corn dogs ever because he would like hand Ooh. spread them um, yeah. right in front of you, made to order and like they're amazing. Um, yeah, I think we're missing the corn dogs at the beach, but they're still pretty good. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never been out to Gibson's, but I'm hoping when Becca comes out here in August um, to see if we could um, put together like an NFC photo adventure. So. Yeah, I think that'd be a great like a photo walk and we can actually meet in person for the first time. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all three of us cool. are going to be in the same province yeah. at one time. Like, we got to do it. Yeah, I mean, we don't know when that will happen again, so. Yeah, it's it's hard to say because, I mean, like, yeah, there's mostly a quorum out here between the two of us. So it's like NFC is really BC heavy now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we started out with, you know, some other branches as well. And, you know, like in Nova Scotia and Montreal, but. Yeah, this has been kind of like the mainstay now, but I don't know, maybe she'll come to visit and she'll stay out here too, so. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. a bit BC um, heavy. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, so yeah. how, how have you enjoyed um, doing the, the curation with Northern I, Black? Bear? I enjoy it. I think it's really great. Like, you know, I think it's fun to see all these different places in Canada and like the people who are, you know, kind of like creative stop signs on the way like you know I definitely am like saving some of the images to go visit places you know next time we can travel so it's been kind of nice to like vicariously travel through curating the Instagram account yeah. um but yeah now that like I'm an official curatorial assistant it's kind of funny that I have like these two different positions that are kind of similar in curation at least in title um and they both also like work with like photography and I am doing some like the social media aspect for this job too. So it's kind of like, okay, this is like really like becoming a bigger thing than the hobby it started out as. So that's awesome. <laughs> kind of like interesting to see that grow just from like, you know, I responded to like Becca's, fa Becca's Instagram post once and then it just kind of went from there. So yeah. Yeah. It's been kind of a wild journey um the past year with, with all yeah. that like between ramping up curators and um the volume one which was yeah really wild and uh yeah. still so cool that becca pulled that off um, yeah with... that definitely that was one thing too that like really cinched it for me was that like you know that getting that book i was like oh like this looks so good <laughs> you know and that was something too that i was like okay you know maybe that's something um, like going forward, I would like to be a bit more involved in that. Cause I, I know I didn't, I really let Becca take that. That was her whole baby and idea and everything. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, something to keep in mind, especially like working in our archives, is just like the importance of those like physical documents too. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's interesting too, that you're saying like, it's, it's like vicariously traveling, um, through other people uh, when you're looking at the feed like trying to pick stuff for curating but I also kind of find it's also a bit of time traveling too because we've got a <laughs> few people that um, post like all these like old school photos yeah um, which is like wild to see like Canada in like the 70s and 80s and yeah stuff like that. yeah there's definitely um, you know I'm terrible at remembering people's Instagram handles 
uh, and then by extension their names because I don't know most of these per people in person. Um, but yeah, there's definitely been like one account that I've shared a number of times that yeah, there's has like the 1980s Toronto scene and like it's just like gorgeous photographs and I know that he has publications too. Um, Is that David Green? Yeah. You know, I'm I not. David Green is one of them. Yeah, um, but there's Clark another. Carroll. There's another one, and I can't remember. I'm sorry if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, there's there's lots of great. Like I, I'm amazed at like how many um, awesome photographers like you know share the the hashtag and um, it's uh, where is it here? Yeah, Brandy says I end up calling people by their Insta handles all the time too. Yeah, I actually just had to go through my phone contacts and like put people's real first and last names in because I was starting to like, be like, oh, shoot, like, what's my friend's actual name? Like, <laughs> you know, just if you want to get in contact with them in the future and the number changes or something, it's just like, how many of your friends do you just forget what their last name is? Like, I don't know, maybe that's a me thing and like, just not having the best memory. But yeah, sometimes I'm just like, Oh yeah, like TJ Rex. That's definitely not my friend's actual name. But that should be. That's an amazing name. I agree, but it's not that. <laughs> so like, you know, I do need to kind of edit some of that. And some of them, there's too many Katie's. Like, I love all of you, but you know, if I don't put last names, I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> yeah, we. I had that when I worked in a call center. We had too many Jasons on our team, so. <laughs> I had one guy that was bearded Jay for obvious reasons because uh, he had a beard. Yeah, <laughs> but now then, he's committed to that, right? Like, yeah, he has to have a beard now. Well, yeah, and now, like, I think still to this day, he's bearded Jay. Um, yeah, and that was, like, fuck, 15 years ago? Yeah. Like, a long-ass time. And then we had Metal Jay because he was into metal. And then, like, even in my life now, I know too many Jasons. Like, you know, there's this Jason Moore and then, like, other Jasons. Like, Jason's a very popular name, it seems. You know, I feel like I, I know, like, maybe two. So, <laughs> I don't know. But maybe if I went to Toronto. <laughs> That's there'd fair. There'd be a couple more, yeah. I can, I can think of, like, one in my high school and one that I taught swimming with, and that's it. So, and that was, like, ten years ago. <laughs> so... <laughs> Aaron says that he might tattoo a QR code of his Insta handle on his neck so Insta friends can find him in real life. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're going to... could be useful, but what if happens to the launch updates? Well, exactly. If you're going to do that, you should do the QR code and an NFC chip so that people have the option where, you know, they I can mean, either, like... I feel like we have to say as, like, part of a analog community that that might not work for all of your instagram contacts right that's true yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, this is my first live stream and i definitely googled how it worked before uh <laughs> accepting it so <laughs> well you're doing great so far yeah i'm feeling good i was i was nervous but i'm feeling better about it now <laughs> well, i mean the, the thing that i like about this format is that it doesn't feel super intimidating because it almost feels like facetiming with someone yes for yeah. sure yeah and that's definitely been like the main mode of communication for the last like year and plus now so yeah we all yeah. live in these tiny little screens yes and then our even smaller film negatives so <laughs> <laughs> yeah Although That's, I did get a scanner. I did, like, get one. So I'm really happy with that now. So what <laughs> so kind of scanner did you get? Uh, I got the Epson V600, just, like, something nice and light to start out with. You know? Nice. I think that could got the same about one. moving again. So I was, like, don't want something bulky. And, That's know, fair. Yeah. I think Becca picked up the same one, too. Yeah. I'm, well, they, they went back in stock just a little while ago. So, yeah. Yeah. And then I think next will be a printer, just because I want to hedge my bets on the dark room. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then I have, like, some, like, other drawings and stuff that I'd be able to use that for, too. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't committed to a film scanner yet because I hate scanning so much. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fine when, like, 
you know, I'm developing my film at this point, and so I'm scanning them, and then I get to see them. I'm like, oh, this is great. But the first, normally, like, my first reaction when I see my photos is, like, I don't like them. And I have to come back to them later to like them. And I don't know if that's the scanning process or if it's just that that's my, like, gut reaction to, like, what I've pictured versus, like, what I actually have. Mm. And then I have, like, higher ambitions for myself. But, yeah. And then, you know, like, my, my twin is also doing um, a lot of film, too. So I don't develop her stuff because she does color. Uh, I'm just developing my black and white stuff now. Um, but since I've gone to the scanner, she's been, like, uh, asking me to scan some of her stuff. And I'm very close to showing her how to scan it. I just need to, like, sit down with her and show her. But, you know, it's just this the pressure, right? <laughs> like, of then, look, like, handling somebody else's stuff and kind of being like, oh, you're going to like this photo or you're not going to like this, you know. I don't want to, like... I don't know, set her up for certain expectations or whatnot either. So, but it's, it's super kind time consuming to scan and then also to be scanning other people's negatives too. Is, you know, that's fair. Yeah. Whereas Aaron said, have you tried shooting negs on a light box with DSLR? It's definitely a process, but for prints, it's the best. Um, I haven't tried that yet. I haven't. Um, DSLR, like, I I don't actually have a digital camera. What? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this iPhone here, this is just kind of as close to it as I get. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Like, Becca didn't have one either, and I ended up, because I had to get rid of a ton of stuff when I was leaving Toronto, I ended up giving her one of my um, extra digital cameras. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where at a certain point you're like, do you just get one or I don't like Keely has one for work because um, she's a journalist so I'm sure she'd let me borrow it but yeah I don't really feel the need to like if it's something that I need to snap like in the moment and want to see right away I use my phone That's um, and if it's something that I really want to take my time with I use analog so you know I don't like I'm not saying that I'm against it or anything I just think you know I'm happy with the cameras I have now yeah um, that's totally yeah, I kind of wish I was at home so I could maybe show them a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Um, Jason says, I like not looking at roles I've shot for months, so I've forgotten all about them. It's easier to judge that way, but he didn't come up with that. Henry Wessel did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that definitely helps with, like, limiting your expectations. Is like, if it's not, like, a quicker turnaround, you kind of have, like, less of oh, I'm expecting this particular photo that I have in my mind to show up. That, yeah, I think that definitely does help a lot. I know over the pandemic, like, I had to move a couple of times. And so, you know, I was sending out my film for part of it. Uh, and just, like, the lag of time between getting it back or, like, not having to somebody to send it out to anymore because I moved or, you know, the person that was locally doing it, their house shut down. You know, I I did end up having things that, like, I ended up developing, like, quite a few roles at one point, and then just, like, mass scanning them. So that was a bit nicer to, like, you know, I think be a bit more distanced from it. Um, but it was also kind of weird because you're going back to the beginning of the pandemic, like, a, you know, like, months, months later, and you're like, oh, remember when we did that? And maybe I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh like I'm in Vancouver there maybe I wouldn't have gone to Vancouver <laughs> like you know just like That's into the fair. city but yeah it's, it's interesting with with the pandemic stuff like we went to this taco joint in Gastown the other night and um you know the BC government in their wisdom have decided COVID is over here I guess <laughs> and... I mean yeah at work, it, we're still making people wear masks. I just get to be mask-free right now because I'm the only person here, and I've locked all the doors. <laughs> I still wear my mask, but it was just weird being at a place that was like the before time, and it was so loud, and like I was just kind of like, man, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, it's a little overwhelming. I'm, you know, I'm glad I live in a more rural area just because it's a bit easier like I'm you know I can kind of 
ease into that a bit more. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think like every time I see somebody's like full face, I'm like, oh, your face is naked now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the showing the knees and like the the before time. It's or, very risque, like or, a little ankle flash. You know, yeah. it's just like, like oh my, ooh. Yeah, I'm just kind of scandalized, which I feel like is just so prudish. <laughs> but you know, it's yeah, I'm definitely still like here when people come into the museum, I have to be like, you you need to wear a mask and. I'm like one of the first people that you see and have to have like establish that but yeah there actually hasn't been a lot of pushback on that so well, that's I good. Think a lot of people are kind of feeling the same way so yeah, yeah not so much here but that's good that it's like that in Gibson's yeah it's crazy I've been living in BC for a year now um and I really don't know Vancouver very well just because I have not really been able to explore there um so yeah I don't know I don't have a great notion of <laughs> what it's like there so I think the like doing a northern film collective photo walk there would be great for me <laughs> just like as somebody who actually lives here now um yeah, yeah. you know because definitely when I first moved out here for the pandemic it was just supposed to be a month um because I had been working at the Banff Center as a practicum mm -hmm. and they that's what they told us like you'll be back in a month kind of thing I'd, I'd already been a little skeptical of that when they like issued that um but yeah now it's you know it's been over a year and I've just signed on to a contract that's definitely extending that so nice. yeah it's like I've this is the first time in like that whole period of time I'm like okay I'm not moving in the immediate future so I actually like getting to know the place a bit more intimately and I think Vancouver's next when I don't know, not when things are open up, but I think when it actually feels a little safer to go in. Yeah. Well, happy to show you around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would definitely be great. <laughs> um, yeah. Waste through. Truck sound great. <laughs> oh, man. I'll take you to some good food places because, you know, yeah. I did not build this Mecca <laughs> eating well, like healthy. <laughs> right? You got to You gotta know who to ask. Like, yeah, you know, I see where your strengths are. Yeah. Yeah, I like walking around and eating things. So. Yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> I mean, like I, I love the Sunshine Coast. Uh, we still have Molly's Reach out here. I haven't actually like gone to it since they've reopened or anything. But yeah, some of the food is not uh, that great. So. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not Toronto here. But there's still some good stuff here. Like Yeah, I mean, realize. Vancouver, I think, is going to be, like, from a food perspective, a bit better. I have been to the American, um, nice. which, yeah, I liked that. They had, like, a burger where the buns were donuts. Um, I was a big fan of that. That's pretty solid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they have, like, a cute little photo booth in there. And, yeah, that definitely, like, I think got me in the door, so... <laughs> I think that would get Jason Moore in the door there too. That guy loves photo booths. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, it was pretty cool. And the guy who runs it, um, like the photo booth, not the restaurant, uh, is does tin types as well and his studio oh. is right next door. So it, like that I think that's how I found the American was through the tin type, or maybe I found the tin type through the photo booth. It's kind of all muddled now, but yeah. Yeah, I did that. In September of last year. Nice. Yeah. Waster of Silver on the scanning thing said that they made the mistake of scanning a few negs on drum scanners and now his their flatbed is so flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's god. True. Yeah, I'm definitely not a scanning expert. Like definitely still learning as I go with it. Uh, I have done some scanning before and I think definitely working in the archives now, I'm going to be doing a lot more scanning. So <laughs> it's definitely something if anybody has tips, like let me know what kind of programs you use. I've really just been saving it like straight from Epson. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing any editing. Um, yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm not anti DSLR or anything like that. I'm just not digitally skilled. So I think, yeah, once those skills get built up a bit more, maybe then I'd do a bit more editing but so yeah, I, I have, have like, like raw files <laughs> I, I have like a big epson like large format multi thing scanner printer whatever 
Um, I haven't really liked the Epson scanning software, so yeah. I've been using ViewScan. And okay. ViewScan is pretty good. I think it's like 30 bucks to buy it, and uh, it's been pretty decent. Yeah. And I've heard good things about SilverFast, too. I, that's the one I've been hearing most about, I think, but it might just be that I like the name. It's, it's a cool name. Yeah. 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 yeah you can't, you can't go wrong with that. Good branding. Like, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. And then a lot of people use Negative Lab Pro for the conversion. Mm -hmm. I haven't fucked with it yet because really what I use it for, since it doesn't do transparencies, is just scanning Polaroids. So I haven't needed to. It, oh, okay. Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah, like I definitely bought mine to scan negatives, so I was, you know, all about that, but yeah, uh, I have scanned a couple of different stuff too, like some Polaroids and whatnot, but yeah, I'm still testing some of the cameras that I have that are Polaroids that I like recently acquired. So, so what did you pick up? Oh, God. I wish they I were in front of me. <laughs> Uh, I could definitely show you, but they're not here. Um, definitely, like, stuff, I think the, like, 60 series, 600 series. Okay, like the box cams? Yeah, yeah. So some of those, uh, the cool cam, I have one of those. Those are uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I have one of those. And then I think I got, I think I recently got a land camera. Yeah, there was a, a store um and gibson's that's the trading post and they went out of business so they had this big closing sale and so i kind of just went in and bought quite a few of their things really cheap uh just to see if i could like tinker around and you know fill some pandemic time <laughs> so yeah um yeah there's a, a thing on instagram um that's like where is it um the hell is it called <laughs> new new land camera i think or something like that where they're working on making a 600 back for the mm -hmm. land cameras so that you could use like i type and sx70 and 600. yeah that would be cool i definitely try to buy cameras that have film still in stock because you know i don't want to cut things down and get into some of the more nitpicky stuff um yeah i'm definitely not too much of like a gear head necessarily um, yeah, I like to just kind of just take focus on the photos rather than all of the other things. Although, I mean, who doesn't love an old camera? So yeah, and the the land cameras are just so cool with the bellows and everything on it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely my first camera with bellows, and it's in really nice condition. Like has the case and everything, which is kind of what sold me on that particular one. Um, but that's the thing. I brought it home, and it's still in the case because I'm a little scared of it. <laughs> I'll come out well, of box soon, probably. If you, if you end up coming to Vancouver, bring it with you, and we can check it out and see yeah. if it works. And if it does, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, like confident with it. So, I mean, just that it works, not in necessarily using it. That'll be a bit more of a learning curve, I think. But yeah, yeah, like depending, like if it's a pack film series land camera, they're usually pretty robust. Like the only thing that you have to do, if it's an electric one is do the conversion so that mm -hmm. um, you can use AAA batteries in it because it uses like a funky battery that you can't get anymore. Or yeah, that's like the thing with like buying some of those cameras, you have to kind of, I'm always in the store doing like a quick Google on it, just being like, okay, like, is this something I could actually use, you know, with relative ease without having to make too many adjustments? Like, I don't want, I'm not into 3D printing any parts, you know, like, it's just, if I have to learn a whole computer program to use it like it's not going to happen <laughs> yeah no. and i mean you can get some of that stuff online really cheap but you know i i do kind of enjoy being able to do it myself like i do like you know i shoot almost exclusively in black and white now just because i can develop it myself um you know and in my bathroom and not really worry about it just turn like the shower vent on so yeah yeah, I had a roommate that developed color in our kitchen uh, and then also like over our washing machine in the basement. And I was like, not super keen on that when that was happening. I was like, I was literally like, you know, where we eat. And then also 
the clothes on our bodies so yeah yeah i was kind of like it's cool if you want to do that but i mean don't take me down with you (laughs) (laughs) that's fair yeah no this doesn't sound very considerate of them i mean they were down like they were definitely doing their own thing nobody else minded but i also was kind of like does it anybody else actually kind of know that that's not good like because at the point the art school i was going to in boston no longer was doing color but they've actually recently Mm -hmm. brought it back into their photo department so but i I took like the last class before they brought it in so you know i kind of just missed doing that color uh so i've really only actually like learned black and white for like being self-sufficient in it i you know i could definitely take photos and send it to a lab in color but I don't know. I feel like it's so much more gratifying to do it yourself. So, yeah, I like the developing. I just don't like the scanning. <laughs> yeah. So. But out here, like, uh, you know, the London drugs that we have here, which is really one of the only places on the coast that you can get it, get anything developed, they send it out now. So oh. a one roll of black and white is $28 to get it Jeez. developed and scanned. Yeah, that was the big push for me to just do it myself. Um, I was That's like, not worth it. There's no way I'm paying somebody else that much money, you know? Yeah, like, that's that's something I've been struggling with since moving here because, like, I was super spoiled in Toronto by downtown camera because, like... Yeah, you were. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Yeah, and I miss it so much, like that's the one thing that makes me kind of want to move back to Toronto <laughs> is um I mean that's a great customer review <laughs> like it, well they were fantastic because like yeah. their prices were great their scanning is amazing um and and their turnaround was awesome like yeah. you know being able to do same day sometimes if you mm-hmm. felt like spending the extra couple of bucks yeah. um, to get that dopamine hit of just like yeah I, I have uh, my pictures back already <laughs> Um, I just haven't been shooting as much because I've tried a couple of labs here Mm -hmm. and I found one that's like, their prices are okay, but their scanning, I don't like very much. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, you know, I, when I first moved to BC, I was in Squamish, so I was just using London drugs. Um, and then... When I was out in Nelson, I started while I was in Squamish sending my film out to Nelson because there was somebody local who was doing it. I felt better, you know, sending my business there instead of London Drugs. Um, But then when I moved to Nelson, like I still use that person, but then they like shut down their business pretty quickly. Um, Yeah, I think they may have still been in school. So I, I think like their studies slowed it down. There was like a period of time where I was like, okay, it's been like a month. Can you give me my stuff back? Um, But yeah, then I moved, you know, back out uh, to the coast. And yeah, it's just London and drugs again. So I was, you know, just kind of pushed into the caffeinol realm. Um, But, you know, I've been feeling like I like the results I'm getting there. uh, So it's not too bad. The only real thing that I have to buy, like from a photo supply store is the fixative. And I just get that in um, online so yeah it's not too bad it lasts forever so I'm not like constantly worried about you know chemicals expiring or you know running out or prices going up on stuff like you know that's totally fair how long were you in Boston for I was there for three years so I had moved uh, from Nova Scotia to Boston to go to art school Uh, I transferred from NASCAD to the School of Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts, which is a real mouthful of a school, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I was there for three years uh, until I graduated and then just a little bit longer um, because I did like two years and a half there for like transferring after transferring some credits over. That was like all I had to take to finish up my degree. Yeah, yeah I, lo- I love Boston. It's such a yeah. cool place. I yeah, I really enjoyed it. I had um, yeah, I had been kind of narrowing it down between like SMFA and Concordia. And I 
ended up just like reaching out to people that I knew that had gone to both schools and sent them the same message, just like asking how they liked it you know that kind of thing and I got like two completely different responses back where like one person was like love Montreal did not like Concordia and the other person was just like I love the school like best years of my life kind of thing um I visited both schools and yeah it was like completely different uh just like focus I think of the school too and SMFA in particular had like a really open program where there was no requirements and there was no like actual like major so you didn't have to declare a major at all so I actually have like a just like a bachelor of fine arts and studio art and I could take whatever class I wanted whenever I wanted and like that's cool yeah and like especially because I was coming back into school that was something that really appealed to me was just not having to kind of start with introductory classes or anything like that and especially since you know, obviously I'm interested in photography now, but when I first started going, like, I had, and I still am interested in, like, drawing, painting, and metal work, so, you know, just having, like, a variety of interests, some of the schools don't really allow for that flexibility, and, you know, mm. I found that, like, the school in Boston was a good fit for that, and then I ended up really liking Boston, too, so that was kind of, like, a happy coincidence that I also liked the city. I mean, it's hard to compare a city to Montreal, right? But I did, yeah, I did really like Boston too, so. Boston just has, like, a very unique charm to it that yeah. I haven't come across in, like, any other city that I've gone to. And the accent just fucking kills me. Like <laughs> Yeah, but, that you know, that's the funny thing. is like, I thought the accents that I came across there were, like, you know, um, like, interesting to my ear. But then... I got so many comments about my own accent and I was just like, I don't know what you're talking about, but. Well, you know, that's it, about. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear it. Um, we, yeah, we tried I, don't have a, I don't have a great ear for it. I cannot fake accents. I'm really bad at that. Um, but yeah, it was definitely something that, like when I was down there, like there was more culture clash than I kind of anticipated going in, but. You know, starting with the AC, but also with people, like, um, thinking that I was from, like, Australia or, like, Ireland. Yeah, just really, like, interesting where people guessed I was from. But, yeah, I was like, it's really not that far. It's, like, Nova Scotia, and they'd never heard of Nova Scotia, or they'd heard of, like, the Trailer Park Boys, which, if you're going to hear about Nova Scotia, that's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it was definitely, like, interesting. You could always tell when somebody had watched it because they would immediately pick up on the accent and be like, have you seen the Trailer Park Boys? It's like, yep, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, those guys love a good wicked pissa. They do. But, you know, at that point it was being filmed in Ontario, so I was like, actually, you know, they're not in Nova Scotia anymore. Oh, shit, they moved uh, the location. Yeah, there's something about that. Like, I mean don't get me started on like the Nova Scotia film tax <laughs> like mm. that was a whole other thing yeah that's disappointing what was your favorite yeah. part of Boston oh well I I was living in Alston and I really liked that neighborhood like the food was great uh yeah I was living in a house with seven other people um and one of the roommates actually like uh, his family owned Coreano's, which is this, like, delicious um, Korean-Mexican fusion place. Okay. If anybody is, like, around there, definitely hit it up. Um, yeah, it was delicious. Uh, yeah, the whole neighborhood is really good for food and is, like, pretty close to downtown. Um, you know, just, like, an hour walk from my school, which, you know, at the time seemed really close. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was really... I loved it there and then there's so many different just like places to go like if you just walk around you find so much there or you know there's just like so many different like resources to go to like different libraries different museums like it's just like the place is just crawling with that kind of stuff and you know that's definitely something I'm interested in quite a bit and you know we have some things like that in Nova Scotia too but just like the scale of it in like Boston and was like so much bigger you know I you know I came from outside of Halifax but you know I'd been in Halifax for a little while and 
you know, I was like, oh, well, I'm moving here from a small city and people say Boston's a small city, like it's not going to be that different. Um, but then, yeah, definitely when I was there, like a lot of people were like, oh no, like that sounds like a small town kind of thing. Yeah. So, it, but you know, it did kind of feel like that. It was like every time I visited home again, it felt smaller and smaller. So, you know, yeah. And then now I live in an even more rural place. So. <laughs> yeah. BC is good for the small towns. Yeah, for sure. I, I really, I like the transit system there. I found it like one of the better transit systems that I've experienced visiting places. Um, but also I've heard like people live in Boston hate it. <laughs> I mean, it was the first place that I lived that had a subway system. So I was really impressed, but yeah, like that was something I, I was like, well, I can get around really easy. Um, so that, you know, that definitely seemed interesting to me. I think some of the subways probably aren't as accessible as others. Um, which might be like one of the bigger issues and then yeah yeah some of the trains are definitely like make these horrible noises you know like the i think it was oh god it's like it's been a while since i left now like it's i mean it feels longer because of the pandemic but i think it was the e train that they said was like the scree train because it just the made this train. terrible noise oh um but i mean like just put some headphones on and you're good so I, I liked the transit system just fine, but like I didn't really have much of a background to compare it to. Um, definitely one time I visited New York from there and I saw one of the trains. I was like, is that like a bullet train? It's so fast. And, yeah, was... <laughs> I mean, I liked it better than Toronto system, but <laughs> the times I've had to drive in Boston because the company I work for has like a head office um, out there. Um, I hated having to drive in Boston. I always, like, enjoyed doing the transit more. I mean, I made it three years there without ever driving, so, you know, that was, yeah, that was a big uh, perk for me, was that it was, like, you know, I could go anywhere, um, just, like, walking or taking transit or a train or, you know, anything like that. And, you know, sometimes, like, my friends would give some rides and I would get to see some other things, too, so that was really lucky, but... Yeah, I think, you know, just being able to be in a city and, like, if you live there and not have to drive, to me, that says that the transit system works, so. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, I didn't have any complaints. Um, and Paul has a question for you. Do you feel that you see in color or in black and white? Oh, that's a good question. Um, thanks, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it is a great question. Uh, I mean... I think, like, when I'm thinking of things, like, in a, like, I mean, I'm a visual person, obviously, but, like, I think when I think of things for certain projects, it'll depend. Like, if I'm thinking thematically of, like, you know, oh, I like the surface of this driftwood color is going to be part of it. Like, if I'm painting it, um, that will be, like, kind of something that ties different paintings in together, but if that's something that you know I'm like going to be taking a photo of it's definitely going to be black and white like there I'd be looking more for like texture and light um yeah like definitely because I take black and white photos mostly um yeah I definitely prefer black and white it also I feel like kind of cleans some elements up for different things that I would take photos of like if there's something that's like bright orange that I don't like that's in the photo if it's black and white it disappears you know if I don't want it to be there it's not there and so I think that kind of gives me a sense of more control over an image so I like I definitely like to do that although I don't know if you see any of my like drawings and paintings they do tend to also be kind of muted color wise um but yeah I feel like I have a sometimes colors can be a little tricky for me like I definitely see some things that I don't think are gray um or I do think they're gray but they'll actually be blue uh I do have a hard time with like reds and oranges I kind of have a hard time telling those apart sometimes uh, but you know That's normally bad. context helps yeah definitely yeah um so in your adventures with black and white have you found um one particular film that like 
is the most compatible with your vision or you, you just like experimenting with different I ones? mean I should experiment more I feel like just because options are a little bit more limited for me right now I normally use like uh, Ilford HP 5 400 but it's also like when I was in art school that was what I learned on and it was also what we sold in the store and I worked at the school store so it was just kind of like what was right there you know what yeah. I had a discount on and then just from there like I'm I really am a creature of habit. Even if I don't mean to be, I'll find myself like re repeating certain thoughts and, you know, not even intending to. Like I'll do a drawing and then realize I did something super similar like five years before. So I feel like as much as I would love to be a bit more adventurous <laughs> with film, it's something that I also just like not really having to consider that as much. Um, but yeah, I think definitely something going forward, like when I'm able to go get some more in person, like in Vancouver or whatnot, then I would experiment with some more. I do have some slide film that I got from, um, what is it, like film photography company in the States? Oh, film photography project? Yes, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'm keen to like, experiment more with that because I did get a couple of projectors as well so I'm really just kind of waiting for a concept to use that in um, but I know Keely has used some of the film I got and I really liked the results from that they are in color so that'll be kind of a different direction for me but yeah I also I ordered some like movie film from them as well like some eight millimeter uh, that I haven't going around to using yet but I do have some things to experiment with I just I don't know I feel like just there's been so much else going on that it's just kind of nice and comforting to stick with what you already know yeah I, I feel that a lot with the whole creature of habit thing I when I got really when I was like getting all excited about film I was trying all these different things and then I started getting confused as to what I shot um so it's just like, let's just make this easy. I'm going to shoot portrait for color and try X for black and white. Yeah. Um, but then like black and white, I ended up being like, okay, well, I'm okay with only using portrait yeah. for color. But in black and white, there's so many cool things <laughs> to try over there. So That's the thing. You get into different textures and grain. And I mean, I think some of it too is that now that I'm developing it myself, I kind of just want to, I don't want to forget which recipe I'm supposed to be using. So like, That's it's kind true. of nice if you just have one film, you just do the one recipe. It's the same all the time kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely room for me to experiment. I think it just also goes back to like when I did learn to do it. Uh, like, you know, I took a class in school. I feel like when I start something, I really kind of have that imposter syndrome where I do need to learn it properly and like it's hard for me to be an amateur at something so I like to yeah. kind of go full in uh, and I did struggle in that class like I think that was one of my more frustrating classes um, and it turned out there was something wrong with the light meter in the camera I was using <laughs> but oh, I yeah I was absolutely going insane like I you know I was just so frustrated and I was like you know, trying these different things. And, you know, it was like towards the end of the class when my professor, who is a really good professor, like, you know, uh, like Bill Burke, he's really great. Um, did take like an, another look at my camera. and was like, oh yeah, like it's this. I was just like, Ugh. like, you know, this whole time I could have been getting like nicer shots. And I don't know, there was like the TA for the class yeah. said that like the compositions were good and stuff, but I was like, yeah, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't come out like, a, you know, so that was like, I think just that frustration is kind of carried forward with me, like doing like photos now, you know, I just don't want to go back to like feeling like I'm not really sure what I'm doing. That's fair. So I feel like some of that is just, you know, going back to class and being like, because every, you know, we had to shoot a roll a week and every week we would come and have to, you know, project our images that we had done and so every week people would you know the whole class would see that like I'd mess something else up on my negatives and it was just like every week I was just so annoyed like first thing in the morning showing everybody that like my photos were bad again 
So, yeah, I did get it together towards the end, though. So that was kind of like a redemption arc for me. But yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, me Samuel says massive deb chart, um, which is great. If if you've never checked out massive deb chart, um, just Google it, and it has like all the different film um, types and like you can pick what type of uh, developer you're using and it gives you like yeah. all the dev times and everything. Yeah, I've seen some of those, uh, and especially like you see some, like, you know, I'm using Caffinol and you see like the bunch of different recipes for that. And yeah, I think it really just comes down to being a creature of habit, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, especially for timing. I think that's something that like, you know, I really have to go through the whole thing every time before I do it, I have to kind of like go through the steps again, um, just to like reacquaint myself with it. Even if it's just been like the day before, I'll kind of go over it again, just trying to avoid any mistakes like that, right? Yeah. But... Yeah, I haven't, um, <laughs> I haven't tried the caffeinol yet, but maybe one day. I mean, I was surprised. I did not think it would work as well as it did. I know some people are like complete purists and use like salt water to fix it but I haven't actually seen anything like conclusive on that so I don't think I'll go that far into it but I think for right now it's good but I'm definitely open to like like you know, learning water more <laughs> like salt water they made or just getting some ocean water both I've seen I've seen both where like people will make salt water but I've also seen like different projects if it's like they're shooting a body of water they'll like develop it with that water um, which is kind of interesting from an artistic standpoint, but I think working in archives <laughs> has me a little worried, right? <laughs> Ari Ariella says, caffeinol, hashtag triggered. She had um, a very terrible experience with our um, sworn enemies at Northern Film Collective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> It's very, it's very weird to me to, I mean, I guess that's the internet, right? Where you have people who just like dislike you on a personal level when you don't know them. Uh, I think that gets to some really interesting kind of <laughs> points, but yeah, I mean, the best part about Caffinol is that you can do it yourself. I can say that for me personally, I would never send Caffinol away. And I'd really encourage you to try it again because, like, the results I was I was pretty surprised with. Um, I was kind of expecting my first roll or two to just not turn out at all, and I don't know. Once I used it, that's what I've been using since. So, yeah. Yeah, I think she mailed it to them, and then he mansplained to her how to take better photos. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as a business model, I think having a capital. Um, based lab that if you don't do any other kind of development uh, I don't feel like that's a great business model because it is like the whole purpose of it is self-sufficiency and yeah. the accessibility to people especially if you live in a more rural region uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if somebody was running something like that and felt the need to feel better about themselves by being mean but yeah, they, they said it was just an extra perk of the service. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, right? I thought the I customer mean, was supposed to give the tip, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, with those people, they give you the tip. <laughs> yeah, they always find some sort of way, right? <laughs> I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about all the time I've used downtown camera is never once did anyone comment on how shitty some of my photos are and condemn me for wasting their time for making them develop and scan my shitty photos <laughs> yeah like to me like as as somebody who i mean i feel a little bit more secure in my practice now that would still completely uh that wouldn't have been received well for sure <laughs> but i think i i probably would have said some something not very nice back but you know that's like looking at you know somebody else's 
experience that I have no connection to. So it's easy to say what you may or may not do. Um, but I yeah, mean, I feel like that's just, I mean, I already went to art school. I had critiques like every week. I don't need to hear it going forward as much. Like it's definitely still like, you know, if you're having a critique or your work's in a show, you're going to hear about it. But if you're submitting it privately, I don't think that's really appropriate. Uh, but no. you know, that's I think part two of why I'm developing my own stuff and scanning my own stuff. And it's like, you know, obviously some of that first reaction, like you can be a little disappointed. At least I get to do that in private now. So <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't have to worry about it so much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah definitely when it was like the local guy I was using in Nelson, I was kind of like, I mean, this is not really like the biggest place. So it's like, what if he recognizes me from the photos? Like that might be a little awkward, like going around town and being like, you know, but. One, have you ever watched One Hour Photo with Robin Williams? You know what? I haven't, but <laughs> I'll add it to the list. <laughs> so if you don't like scary movies. Oh, I love scary movies. <laughs> okay, well, then perfect. He plays a guy that runs a one hour photo that um, ends up being really creepy about his patrons. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And Robin Williams plays a terrifying bad guy. That would be a that would be a nice kind of role to see him in, I think. It's it's like bone chilling the way that he plays the character in it. Like oh. it's just very creepy and just if you like if all you know is his comedic stuff and you watch that movie You'd expect like, a different movie. <laughs> exactly. Like you expect a different thing and it's just like, you know, this is where maybe he exercised like all of the not being able to get thing like the things Oof. that he could get in comedy movies, but it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, Brandy says it's more of a psychological thriller, and yeah, it's right. It's not yeah. really a scary yeah. movie. It's like there's it's probably no jump scares movie. to it, but no, not well. Yeah, it's more like slow creepiness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely into that. Like I, I've definitely seen like more than my fair share of like older movies, so <laughs> I think. Yeah, definitely the horror genre is, you know, a good touch. Yeah, it's a a fantastic one, though. But yeah, just like when you were talking about small town, the guy might recognize, it made me instantly think of one hour photo. Yeah. Yeah, it was just kind of one of those things where I was just like, but also if he recognizes me, I can be like, okay, you've had my film for like two months. Can you just send it to me now? (laughs) It's like, give me my film back. Yeah, it's like, look, I I know you're, like, young, and this is your like, business, and, you know, I want to support that, but I'm also, like, give me my stuff, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, but. Yeah, I think that's a, a hard one, um, when it's, like, small town business kind of thing. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing, like, I stopped going to him because he did shut down. So, I mean, I was, I was no longer sending him the black and white. So I think I'd still be developing my own stuff, but you know, I was still sending out like, uh, like a couple of colors, but yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's part of like learning what works for you. And especially as like some services are like no longer being provided or like some film goes out of stock, like you always have to kind of adjust, but yeah I think that's part of why I don't want to experiment too much too is like I don't want to fall in love with another film and have it get taken away you know that's fair yeah just don't the best way to avoid that is don't buy any Fuji products <laughs> yeah I mean I I'm not buying Fuji right now uh, I don't see that coming up uh, but yeah I think yeah I just you know I just don't want to get my heart broken by analog um, that's fair yeah i'm not even gonna start with digital <laughs> well i i won't make any film recommendations then because I, okay. I don't want to break you out of your your, <laughs> your habits i and... i do have a couple of ones to try out um that i like currently have so once i get around to those i feel like just for some of the experimental ones i, I do want to have more of a concept driven project so for me um I do have to kind of wait sometimes for that to come and I'm hoping like working in archives and like doing like research 
um, maybe I'll come up with some ideas, especially like since I'm in like a specific location now, I'm kind of going to be here for the foreseeable future. It'd be nice to have something that I could actually like do in the area. So if there's something that comes up like in the local archive that I'm interested in, that could be like a jumping off point for me. But yeah, I think for awesome. some of those more experimental ones, I'll, I'll have to wait for a concept maybe. <laughs> What what are the films that you're hanging on to that you're you're waiting to try? Uh, I have one that I got from Film Photography Project that is like a, it's a slide film, but it is from like an anonymous government facility that oh, like okay. deaccessioned their film, and then Film Photography Project like re-rolled them. Um, so it's just kind of like a, and they have like a little alien logo on it, so it's just kind of like a fun little quirky like oh maybe it was the FBI kind of thing. So I have some of those to play around with. Um, yeah, and then just like some other more standard slide films. Um, yeah, I'm like gonna, I think, branch out into some more moving images, but we'll see how that goes. That all sounds really fun. Yeah. yeah I'll also be testing the camera that I'm using that one for, so I might do it like just like some quick test rolls. <laughs> I'll pose one second. <laughs> That'd just be you. Okay, great, because I'm definitely going to blink. Um, That's yeah, fine. I've definitely. Uh, oh my god, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> we always get weird when the camera's in our face, right? Yeah, it's the worst because you know I take, I take photos of other people sometimes. Like definitely not a lot right now. Like it's mostly just like you know, the people in my bubble, but yeah, once the camera turns around, like, I don't know what to do with my face. Um, there's a lot of photos of me blinking or just like kind of being like, but yeah, trying to get over that stereotype of the photographer who can't also be in a photo. That's fair. So, yeah, especially I think since I did get more into photography when I was in Boston and like several of my roommates and friends were into film photography. So like, I definitely... Like, they would take some photos um, and sometimes take photos of me if I was, like, not um, being weird about it, I guess. Uh, so I, I got to, like, become more familiar through them and seeing, like, the cameras they used and the film stocks they used. And then, uh, like, for me, I didn't want to, like, I don't know, kind of encroach too much by asking too many questions. So, like, did take a class to kind of formalize what I was learning. But, yeah, that was definitely part of it was, like, a lot of people having cameras out and then um living in like a, a show house where we had bands playing in the basement so we had different events happening there and people bringing cameras uh, to shoot those you know definitely you have to come out of your shell a bit at some point so you know I'm still working on that a little like with cameras specifically but yeah I think that's something that like we gotta get together. You can't hide behind your camera all the time, right? Yeah, yeah I I sometimes turn the tables and I let people like shoot me back. Where yeah. it's just like, okay, here you could take the camera and like, you know, take a picture of me. Um I don't really like having my picture taken though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean it can be tough, right? I mean I take a lot of photos of my twin, so I kind of cheat at it where it's like you know, if you go through my Instagram, it might, it might look like it's me, but it's actually somebody else. And then <laughs> quite a few of the photos of me are taken by her. So it's a bit more comfortable, you know, when it's like your twin doing it, I think. Um, but, or like one of your close friends, I, I definitely feel like if it's somebody else, then I might have a more disappointed face, especially like I have such a hard time controlling my facial expressions. I feel like it's really obvious if I'm like don't want my photo taken or if somebody yeah. or if I don't like the person who's holding the camera I think it becomes a bit more obvious um yeah so <laughs> that can be a bit of a trickier situation sometimes where I just feel like you know you end up seeing like what other people see and like if you have like not the nicest face on you can kind of be like oh I look like a mean person <laughs> like yeah totally yeah 
Brandy says you can totes hide all the time, just won't be really a record of you living life. Yeah, I mean, you do at some point have to be like in the photos, right? Um, yeah, the, <laughs> it's interesting with that. Like, so there was a YouTube ad I saw the other day, which was kind of interesting for a documentary on Val Kilmer. Um, okay. which is kind of like the trailer was interesting and I'm tempted to watch it even though like he was kind of a dick to some indigenous folks in a neighborhood that he moved into yeah. uh, but maybe he's made good on that since but I guess he's been um, recording his life um, since like the I guess like the 80s or something when he started getting some money so it's like he had a video camera as soon as he could afford one and was oh, wow. just like he's been recording his life on like Super 8 and um you know uh camcorders and things like that mm -hmm. so like the documentary is just like going through all of these like you know decades of film that he shot about um the uh about his life and it just it seems really it looks really fascinating and it's just yeah. interesting seeing like all of the different eras as well because there's like you know video from like the 80s and stuff and like you know the 90s and um i think i might check it out I yeah know. i mean there's no harm in it especially if you pirate it you know <laughs> so yeah yeah if, if i'm watching a movie and you know i have a problem with like the producer or the director for whatever reason then i mean i'll just find it online sometimes and feel a little bit better that at least i'm not putting money in the pockets of people that like i don't think should have the same level of power that they do but yeah i think uh it is interesting especially if somebody has like an archive that's that long you know and if you have money you typically like will update the cameras so yeah you can kind of see like that change as well like with the technology as it progresses and that's really interesting. I feel like in my own family, like I have um, a bunch of videos that are like of my mom when she was young and like her family. And then at a certain point, I think it just kind of stops as like the cameras change and like you just didn't keep up with it or yeah, I don't think I've seen any from my childhood. I don't really remember like, like a camcorder, um, but there might have been one. I just didn't really register. But yeah. yeah, I feel like like looking through your your own kind of like archive of life is really interesting. And I think if you're not actually in it, you do look back on that later and like regret it a bit, you know, especially like certain moments you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, like I, I wish I was in that photo. But yeah, I think I think it helps to like the better you get at taking photos that it does make it a little easier to kind of be in them and you know, not make the same silly face or, you know. Um. Totally. <laughs> like. Yeah, I definitely have some regret that I didn't get into shooting earlier. Because um, there's like, I don't know, I was too busy like being a drunk asshole in high school <laughs> to like, really take time shooting. And there's just like all these moments in my mind that I remember that I wish I would have had a camera for where it's yeah. just, like, that would have been such a great photo, or, like, I wish I had a picture of, like, this person's face that I missed, that, like, they're not here anymore, and, like, I'll never be able to see them again. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely sympathize with that. I think, I think part of the guilt for me is that, like, my first darkroom class I took at NASCAD as, like, a, um, like, a weekend thing. I went, like, a couple of weeks uh, on Saturdays to it when I was, like, 16, and then I just didn't get a camera after it. Like, I was like, that was cool. And then didn't even think to, like, keep it going or follow it up. Because, like, I just kind of, you know, you got, like, the camera was, like, rented as part of the class. So it's just, like, I didn't really kind of pursue, like, how I could actually like, keep doing that going forward. You know, and Halifax has a dark room. Um, so that, like, you can go and do all sorts of stuff. In, and then I never got into that while I was there. And it was, like you know, one of my last years in Boston when I did it. And, you know, I, I think now of like, oh, I would have, you know, I would have loved to have that 
earlier and kind of document some other things too. I mean, talk about being a drunken asshole. I don't drink anymore, so I won't get too much into that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the camera can be a bit of a crutch now at parties where you're just like, well, I don't drink, so like I can I can do this instead. But I mean, exactly. when was the last time I was at a party, really. So yeah, I. I... <laughs> <laughs> I try to avoid drinking, but there's some people that bring it out of me. Um, in yeah. some environments, it feels safe, and so I'll let it. Hey, I I'm not going to judge you for that. I do wish that I had like I think one of the things I look back on the most that I wish I'd had my camera for was like uh, I was living in Cape Cod for a summer, and I was working at like an arts nonprofit there, and I really wish I'd had my camera then. And that was like right before I took the camera class. So it was just like, I don't know, I wish it was like one of the first classes I'd taken at SMFA. Mm -hmm. Just because like now so much of my practice, I think is like interconnected across different mediums. And I think it just kind of brings something that was lacking earlier in my arts practice. And I think if I had introduced that earlier on, it would have, uh, I mean, you can always look back and be like, I wish I had done this, but yeah, exactly. yeah I think especially for like living in Cape Cod, that would have been really cool um, to have, like, it's just so beautiful there. So yeah, and I was working with a bunch of different artists as well. So it would have been cool to like photograph some of those workshops, uh, you know, and just like kind of document more of that. Now I have to like scroll back through my iPhone to remember things and I don't know, there's just something so artificial about that, so. It is kind of weird, like, yeah, a lot of my memories are now just in the iPhone. Yeah, I kind of worry about like, I don't know, like the digital burning of Alexandria or something where like, you know, if all of this disappears, it's like, oh yeah, I'm, how am I going to be able to like function and have like a brain that is not also like part of a device? You just gotta get yourself one of these guys? Yes, oh my god. Oh, uh? <laughs> uh, the brick, yeah. Yeah, the Synology NAS. I just, this is a new one. I after this um, thing, I got to go pick up hard drives for it. And oh, wow. It. <laughs> it's brand new then. Well, new to me. Um, oh, okay. But it's an upgrade from the one that I had previously. But they're yeah. super duper handy. Yeah, that's definitely like some next steps. Like I have, you know, I've been, now I have the scanner and all that. I have like a lot of stuff on my computer and, you know, that's something I'm going to need to back up sooner than later. I've definitely had some friends who learned that too late um but yeah so that that would definitely be something if, if anybody has backup recommendations for like hard drives and stuff well sure we got people out there for that I'll, I'll tell you what you can have the one that i'm replacing oh i just have to go to vancouver <laughs> yeah just when you come here you, you can yeah, you yeah. can pick it up it's still good like it's just older but yeah, yeah i just wanted something faster but it's great for like <laughs> protecting your data so yeah yeah definitely um i mean definitely something i'm looking at too just like with this job i'm you know doing a lot of collections management now and i'm kind of seeing some flaws in my own so it's something to kind of keeping keep updating and as you go along right so yeah, yeah someone says they shoot glass plates i mean that that could be good but <laughs> if you're going to do, you know, shoot tin type, then at least it's a little bit more robust than the glass plates, because glass plates, you can still smash them. Yeah, I mean, not to, not to, like, burst that bubble or anything, but we do have some of that in the collection, and a lot of them are, are struggling right now, conservators-wise, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's definitely some stuff I'm working with right now that I'm not sure I would want to go back that far um especially since i'm not super into the experimentation yet like i think that's something yeah. that you know i do want to grow in but like just right now no and then i think especially with the glass plates um i can be like fairly clumsy um you know i have a cat she gets into a lot of trouble you know i don't that's I don't what know. they do <laughs> Yeah, she's quite skilled. And she's also pretty clumsy. Like she has, um, she's like partially blind in one eye. So she's actually not very graceful for a cat. So, you know, we don't want to break any glass 
negatives around her or like glass slides or anything and yeah make her condition even worse so that's totally fair yeah but, yeah and just like some of the ones here that i don't know there's not a lot of repair i can do for them so it kind of breaks your heart when like the photo is itself an object that does become kind of an issue for conservation so those is like some of those are really interesting time machines though um a friend of mine owns a joint here called space lab in vancouver which is like this store of all of the things you never knew you needed but now you want <laughs> and um he has all of these like just boxes of these old glass plates and i was looking through a few of them and <laughs> one of them was wild because there was a dude rocking a push broom mustache <laughs> it was just like there was a time before a crazy man ruined that look where it's like you know people yeah. used to rock those and there You're wasn't like, when was this photo taken like <laughs> yeah because yeah. it's just like was this a before or after photo because <laughs> yeah it's hard to tell definitely some photos in the archive here that i will not be sharing publicly so like yeah i mean you always get that with like certain uh, things that just are not politically correct you know you gotta be careful so there's definitely some images too that i'm like oh this would be great for halloween and then you look a little closer and you're like oh that person's doing blackface like that i'm not sharing that so you know it can be a bit tricky like navigating some of that and then planning some exhibitions it's like well, you can't just like kind of erase some of that. You do want to include like the reality of different, you know, communities. But but that's totally cool because our prime minister did that, so it's it's fine. You can you can totally. <laughs> I know I voted for him, but like, uh, how disappointed yeah. are you? <laughs> He's just such a drama teacher, you know, like yeah it's just always that kind of performance and you know then recently with getting the vaccine through his tattoo it's like you know wait what, what? i missed that one. Oh yeah like the photos of him getting his vaccine like he has like a first nations design tattooed on his shoulder right like of course he's like the king of cultural appropriation and then like he has both of his vaccine photos like the vaccine is going through the tattoo and I'm just like, you kind of done the other arm. Like, yeah. Just like how all of his practices go right through Indigenous rights. Yeah, I'm like, oh, is that the next pipeline? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he did appoint a, uh, an Indigenous person to another government position for, you know, probably temporary time. We'll see. Yeah, but I don't know, like, if this is, like, remembered super well but i remember when i moved to the states and people were like oh like trudeau is so much better than trump um because trump was elected like two months after i moved there uh i was just like yeah except for that one time he had a boxing match with a conservative indigenous mp and the prize was like whoever lost had to cut their hair and i was like dude that's like that's just really oh. messed up and just like knowing the context of that and like the importance of that and also being like, well, if you lose, it doesn't mean as much to you. Like, you know, that's just, I don't know. I, I found that like really disrespectful. And of course, like, you know, they both agreed to do it, but I don't know that like just seeing that happen. I was like, what yeah. are you doing? Like, why are you doing these performances? And like, do you not understand, like, the significance of this? I don't know. Or when they went and did their vacation in India and dressed more Indian than the people in India. <laughs> that, that one was, like, that was so wild. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, definitely the part of our archives. Trudeau's not in any of them, but <laughs> there are definitely some people who... Uh, would definitely hang out with him that are in the archives. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it's interesting because, like, Canada has such, I 
I don't know what the right word is for our history, but um, a divisive and fascinating history, I suppose, maybe? Yeah, history in modern day, really. It's... We're yeah. not very far from the history, really, though, in modern yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to talk about it, like, in terms of history, right? Like, it's, it's still happening. Uh, you know, like, Trudeau is currently our prime minister. It is, but you know what might be fascinating, like, having an archives like that, where you have these dark artifacts. Yeah. Maybe it would be an interesting exhibition to, to show those. Well, we, we, that's the thing we do. I mean, I really just started here. So it's like, it's not something that I'm like spearheading right now or anything, yeah. but like the curator that I'm working with is like, uh, I really like enjoy his like take on things. And like, I think that a lot of our values line up and that was like a really big part of like taking the job was that, I don't know. I thought that uh, since it's a really small team, it's really like the two of us and a summer student. Okay. that you know we would have to kind of agree on a lot of those things like I thought that was really important to kind of suss out before taking the job um yeah I'm definitely you know like looking at around the museum you see a lot of like those more realistic approaches and like definitely like actually acknowledging things uh and just like the real lives of people who lived here uh and you know communities that are here now like you know it's yeah it just, it, it's just it's a good history to put together but like to you know and in a small space to like kind of mix that all in together i think that like the current like the current curator has done like a really good job um of that yeah like that i just feel that would be a very interesting exhibition to have where it's just like all the stuff that people would typically shy away from and be like oh don't show that because like that's that'll put us in a bad light yeah. or it's like you know an exhibition where it's just like the raw history of Canada not whitewashed not whatever yeah yeah that's the thing like definitely um the you know the curator's done a lot of work for that and I'm excited to see like our some of our exhibitions that we come up with for the future uh it's just something that since we were really just reopening from the pandemic, it's not the first thing that we're going to be focusing on, but I'm yeah, excited to see like that. And especially as this will be a position where I'm more involved with exhibit planning. I think that's something that I'm like really excited to get into. Um, and especially that we agree, there's not going to be like, I think too much tension within the team about what we're going to be displaying uh, and how we are really going to be like framing things. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, even on some of our social media, like, I, I know Matthew shared some of the images from, like, residential school that is in the area, and people were responding to me, like, I didn't even know we had one, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> like, of course, you know, they're everywhere, like, yeah. Yeah, so. there's, like, 130 some of them in Canada. Yeah, you know, it's like, no, for sure. Like, so I think that's, uh, yeah, I don't want to make any promises about upcoming exhibits, but that's definitely something that is like currently on display, but we're going to be including like some more perspectives as well. And we're doing some repatriation work that I'm really excited about too. So that's yeah. awesome. I'm saying we, but like, I really just started. So it's like, he's doing it and now I get to too. So <laughs> yeah. I can't with, really like, take having, any credit for it <laughs> yet, but... You know. With having so much historical kind of data there, um, do you guys do any work with any of the Indigenous communities to help them with land claims and things like that? Uh, so that is actually, like, kind of complex, like, especially, like, on the Sunshine Coast. You know, I am not a local yet, so it's not mm -hmm. something that I can speak to like historically in a lot of depth or even like uh, contemporary, but a lot of uh, like businesses here and whatnot are actually native owned. Uh, there are quite a lot of uh, like businesses that are like on band land and are like run through the nation. Um, 
especially like in my town like that I live in like where I live if I walk down the beach like not even two minutes I'm actually like on nation land so uh that's not something that I've been doing uh just because like that has been closed off like the nation has like blocked certain residential streets from access which is having moved here during the pandemic and that's why the signs are up um has been really interesting to me because it is more visual to see where like the nation land is here yeah. um, but we do have like a land surveyor on the board and there are like quite a few archives about some different land allotment laws that have been like like taken in through different waves of history and like how that kind of worked so it is interesting to see that uh like colonization and effects and also like kind of like the current day situation so yeah definitely as like I'm coming to learn more about like the place where I've only recently moved here like in January um it's like pretty interesting uh to like see those kind of archives like firsthand and then also like take the bus home and like see you know like where the bus stop is and like where I live you know I walk like like my bus stop is actually on nation land and then I like go home and I'm right next to it as well and then the businesses on like different sides of me are also like nation owned so it's like really interesting like here that it's you know it is like a lot more of a visual presence um especially for like you know some of the smaller towns like at least where I'm from like if you saw nation land like it wasn't really as close to like some of the city or the towns right yeah. so yeah it's definitely like something I'm I'm looking at a lot here but it's easier to look and see I think when you're new to some place so yeah I mean still That's... learning a lot and definitely not trying to sound like an expert in anything but I mean yeah definitely something that looking a lot here we do have some workshops um that are led by an indigenous artist uh, and she does like basket weaving workshops and we do uh, quite a few of those they're on hold right now but uh, i'm eager to see those start up again and yeah that's awesome and you know hopefully like i'll be able to document some of that stuff for the future archives of the institution, but yeah, be cool. That is very cool. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Like, it, yeah. it sounds like a really great opportunity for you to, like, you know, learn more about your your craft, but also <laughs> learn more about um, the area you're in. Yeah, I think it's a good fit. Um, yeah, especially like moving around uh, so much, like this last year has been like pretty uh, unrooted for me. So I think it's it's nice to be in one spot for like a certain length of time. Um, and like, you know, commit to a, a job that's gonna be, you know, longer than a year. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a good fit. You know, like, I think there's a lot that I can learn here and I think there's a lot that like I can bring to, you know, as a, Curatorial assistant, you know. I'm excited to learn more about the exhibitions that you guys. Yeah, will have. for sure. I mean, we're open like six days a week, so <laughs> yeah, catch the ferry. We're just up here. We got a beachcombers exhibit too, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I've never been to Gibson, so it sounds like a. Like it's a cute. It's a cute place. Like I like it. Um, yeah, I don't live in town or anything, but you know. It's cute, so. That's cool. Yeah, and then next time I can actually, like, show some of the gear I have, but not right now. I would show you some of the, the stuff we have here, but uh, I don't think that would be well-received by the board. No, that's the fair. Curator. <laughs> so, I want you to get in trouble. Yeah, so. like, two of the enlargers are, are in the bathroom, so. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good place for them because there's water and stuff there. So you could like, you know, work with the, the negatives and. Yeah, the I mean, 
they they might be in a bit rougher shape. I still have to like kind of take them out and give them a once over, but we'll see. Yeah, where they are at. Yeah, the curator wasn't sure what they were, so they're just kind of like stuffed back there. But yeah, definitely going to be checking out some of the nooks and crannies around this place, see what other treasures are to be found. So, yeah, gotta find a nice little spot where you could set up a dark room. There's so many dark rooms here. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I I can I can try. I just have to see how well received that is, uh, and then how actually practical it would be. Um, you know, I definitely can't do it in one of the archive spaces, and most of our dark rooms are for that. Mm. And then aside from that, it's you know the bathrooms, and those are public access, so <laughs> that complicates things for sure. Yeah, might have to stick to my own bathroom. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you hanging out with me uh, yeah. for a little bit and sharing the adventures of uh, your your education and your creative work and uh, what you've got going on over there with the archives. Yeah, um, I'm definitely excited about this position. So, you know, it's a good time to get a job, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, I'm running a, a little bit out of, like, the, the brain steam. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I went straight from work to this. I mean, I'm still at work, technically, but I don't think I'll count these, this hour on my yeah. time sheet, so. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Um, don't Yeah, I mean, I still have to, like, set the alarm and lock the building after this, so. <laughs> well, I should let you get on with your evening but thank you yeah. for hanging out with me yeah, and for sure. um thank you to everyone for tuning in i appreciate all of you guys like you know it's um it's amazing to have guests uh, spend time with me and have all of you join us and, and uh, hear our conversation and interact with us in the chats yeah i'm um, glad that i don't see like the notifications for it because i feel like that would have intensified the situation for me but i'll be looking at them later on and yeah <laughs> you know, see who's all turned tuned in. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. I feel like, yeah, my rambling can be a lot once you like have been like not socializing for so long. It can be a little much, but you know, it's a, your rambling was poster, great. So I can just talk and talk, right? <laughs> well, your, your rambling was great and Perfect. it was fantastic chatting with you. And, uh, I really hope we can put together an NFC event uh, here. I think that would be a lot of fun to uh, yeah. meet yeah. people out here. And um, you know, hopefully that would inspire Becca to put one together for uh, for Toronto as well. Yeah, I definitely think that that would be like great. I'd love to do that. Um, it'd also be great if I recognize anybody on the ferry like coming back. Then if somebody Ooh. else lives on the Sunshine Coast, we can hang out. Still looking to meet people out here. It's been you know, you can't really meet people often, like, in person right now, so it's been a little strange, like, living in a place where I don't actually know anybody local, so, yeah, definitely looking forward to being able to, like, actually interact a bit more uh, in person, <laughs> and, yeah, and see more of Vancouver, for sure, like, it's weird that I have been living so close to it, and feel like I don't know the city at all. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you want to do a walk on sometime, I could pick you up at the ferry joint in <laughs> around Vancouver. So yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Happy to tour you around. Great. Yeah. And uh, next week, I'm going to have uh, Morbid J out of New York, um, who's a great uh, instant. South of the border. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah we're we're going to dip down south of the border again. Um, he's a great. Polaroid and film photographer um so that should be a fun fun yeah challenge. I'll check that out maybe activate some of my Polaroid cameras you know <laughs> exactly we'll get you doing the Polaroid instant film oh film. yeah I mean Polaroid's amazing right it's like its own totally own thing like definitely want to get into it more well but... so before we take off one thing that I have been really digging is I picked up this uh instant lab the other day. I have seen those around. How They're, do you like it? I fucking love it because you can do these cool collage things with it. So this is a 35 millimeter photo mm -hmm. that I turned into a Polaroid collage.
Oh, did you get muted? I had just like my Instagram limit timed out. <laughs> That's, fair. That's fair. Okay, wow. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. It's hard for me to understand how that worked. Like, I'm really one of those people who needs to walk through the whole process. Um, I would well, love to see that. It gets even crazier. So I took a photo of that and then I made a Polaroid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just getting meta is like the Polaroid of the Polaroid. Well, so th this was because there's this cool little um, mini art gallery thing in Granville Island where mm -hmm. it's like a free art thing and you just put, it's like a free book library, but for Wait, art. With the tiny little people in it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I've seen this and like on Instagram. <laughs> I haven't yeah. been able to like actually see it in person, but yeah, so I find so many of the like little exhibition spaces that have cropped up like in the last year. Like and so it, it's like drop some art off and take some art off so i've been yeah. dropping instant photos in there so that's what this one's for i'm gonna drop oh, that wow. in the little art gallery thing yeah see that's the thing there is a lot to see out there and i just feel like every time i go on like the day's too short yeah well you have a place to crash <laughs> with the fairy thing so yeah for sure you, know, you just got to make some time to come out here <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? <laughs> but, yeah, time yeah, is always difficult. Sure. But speaking I mean, of time, I should let you get on with your evening. Um, yeah. But, you know, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Love all you guys. And yeah, thank thanks, you. everybody. I uh, can't wait to actually hang out in real life. Yes, really looking forward to that. You'll hear even more rambling, and there's probably uh, a much longer time limit. So, <laughs> yeah, get ready. I'll have to bring like my own water to it or something just to keep Definitely. it. <laughs> I'm ready for rambles. Um, have a great night though. And stay yeah, safe. Yeah, you too. Yeah. All right. Cheers, everybody. Bye.